Hello, nice to have you here. This talk is about climate neutral aerobatics, about climate neutral flying in general. I held this talk first time in Brussels this February 2020 at the European Airshow Council. It was a great honor for me to be invited and also a lot of fun. So on this first slide, you see my extra 300S doing what it does best, aerobatics with a lot of smoke. My name is Martin Greff. I'm into aerobatics and also a medical doctor. So obviously I'm a pilot. I got about 3000 hours, two thirds in gliding, one third in motor power planes uh, like aerobatic planes. I work as a cardiologist and also as an aeromedical examiner for the EASA and the FAA. In my spare time, I did a lot of triathlon with Ironman competitions in Frankfurt, Roth, and Hawaii. And important for you, you can trust me because I have no conflicts of interest. So this talk is about sustainability of nature and how to combine this with our passion. So what made me think about this? Of course, it was a personal inspiration by my co-pilot and daughter. She asked me whether we would like to attend a seminar about climate change. So this is what we did. We went to a seminar of Plan for the Planet, one NGO that has its roots in the Billion Tree Campaign of the United Nations Environment Programme of 2006. They planted 12 billion trees until December 2011 and then handed over the program to the NGO. Plant for the Planet now is planting trees in Yucatan, Mexico, and they estimate that every tree is cleaning 10 kilograms of CO2 from the atmosphere every year for many years. So for me, this was an incentive to go ahead. I asked myself a few questions. First was, how many emissions would I have every year with my aerobatic flying? Second, what could I do about them? Third, what would be the advantages and disadvantages if I did so? So let us go to the first question. How many CO2 emissions do I have every year? It's easy to calculate. We take the flying hours and the Afghans. We take the smoke oil for the air shows. We take the engine oil for training and inverted flying. We take the energy for maintenance, the energy for an office, and the liters of gasoline we need for my car to drive to the airport. This all comes together to about 12 tons CO2 every year. So to be honest, I didn't know what 12 tons of CO2 would mean to anybody. So I did some research. I found out that a European citizen in 2016 had about an emission of 10 tons CO2 every year. US citizens had a little bit more. A flight to Los Angeles from Brussels would be half. A horse, if you are into horseback riding, would be something like the same. A dog would be a third or a fifth. And if you had a cat, you would have emissions of about one ton CO2 every year. This means instead of aerobatic flying, you could have 12 cats. So after having calculated the emissions of 12 tons every year, there is a question how to compensate them. There are two principal ways. First is to remove the CO2 from the atmosphere by planting trees, biomass or something like that. Second would be to avoid pollution in another place like reducing the use of fossil fuels by wind, hydro or solar power. This especially attracted me because the Afghaz I burn is not only spilling out CO2, there are lots of other chemicals. And by reducing the use of fossil fuels, I would come much more closer than just by removing CO2. So these thoughts were leading to my personal preferences. I would rather be preventive than cleaning up afterwards. 
I thought it would be nice to have the cleaning up in the proximity of my activity, like in Europe, and of course it should be kind of affordable. After all of these considerations, my personal choice was a hydro power plant in southern Bulgaria in Katunzi. This project consists of irrigation canal that was already there, a small reservoir and a pipeline that is going into a valley. Here turbines stand and produce electricity. The project was um, built to the verified carbon standard and this was verified by an Italian company called Reiner Services. They estimated that 12,000 tons of CO2 would be compensated by this power plant every year. So how could we find out how many tons are compensated? The amount of CO2 that is compensated by a power plant is usually calculated by the baseline method. The baseline method calculates how much CO2 would be released by generating the same amount of energy using standard energy production methods of the region. This means that if a country was producing all its electric energy by oil or coal, the reduction of the emissions by electric hydropower would be maximal. Every single kilowatt would directly reduce oil or coal consumption. On the other hand, if a country was only using hydropower or wind power or solar power, you can produce any amount of clean energy but will not reduce any CO2 emissions. Now, in the case of Bulgaria, electric energy is produced by 50% of oil or coal, 30% atomic and 20% renewable. So in this case, every second kilowatt is directly reducing the use of fossil energy. And there is another requirement, it's called additionality. It needs to be proven that additional funding is required in order for the power plant to work. This is not difficult since a small hydropower plant is less competitive than a large fossil or atomic power plant. So now that we know about the emissions, what to do about them, here are the pros and the cons. First, it's very good for me because I feel much better about my flying right now. Second, it's easier to promote flying to younger kids today because they're very climate conscious. And third, it's a great topic for the press. Of course, there are also some disadvantages. First of all, you have to pay for it. It's about one hour of flying with my extra every year. And it's not an advantage for air shows right now. But I can live with that because I want to be invited because I fly so nice not because I'm climate neutral. Now we are coming to an end. I definitely know that my twofold compensation of 12 tons CO2 every year is just a drop in the ocean. But as Douglas Adams said one day, the single raindrop never feels responsible for the flood. So this might encourage others to do the same. And then it's not only one, but two and many, many more. And of course, there is another topic that I have to address. It's that you might not believe in climate change, world warming, etc. There is a lot of interest involved, a lot of money. But the worst scenario would be a reduction of pollution will keep our planet nice and clean. And that's more than worthwhile. So thank you very much for your audience. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please contact me. I will show you on the following slides which addresses you can use. Take this address for medical issues. And this address for aerobatics or air shows. Thanks a lot. Have a good time and take care.